the book of Ruth with the word of wisdom from our Father in Jesus' name, verse 1. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife Naomi, pleasant one in the Hebrew, and the name of his two sons, Malon, which means sick, and Kalion, which means pining, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah, Ephrath being the ancient name of Bethlehem, and they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. Now, Canaanite women were forbidden, but not Moabite women, because a Moabite man might not enter into the congregation of Yahweh, as we know from Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 3. So it's masculine there, so it's perfectly fine for them to take women from Moab. And as you probably already know, Ruth will become the great-grandmother of David, and from David will come Christ eventually, from the king line. And they're from Judah, and so it is. You have to learn the key of David, that is to say, the bloodline of the true Christ coming from Judah. And within that, you understand the difference between the false and the true. Okay? The key of David. And to continue, verse 5, And Malon and Kilion died, also both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. They had died, in other words. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Bethlehem meaning house of bread, Christ being that bread of life. And here we're reading of part of the genealogy of Christ. The true Christ, that is to say. And you got to know the difference between the true Christ and the false Christ. And if nothing else, understand this, that the false Christ, who is Satan himself, will appear in Jerusalem, which is this geographical location we're reading of here. And most of the world will think he's Christ returned because they didn't read their father's word, whereby they were warned and not deceived. You have to read it with understanding, otherwise you're not going to understand what God is warning you of. And that time fast approaches and get cracking if you're not aware of what I'm talking about. The sixth trumpet is when the false Christ appears in Jerusalem and the seventh trumpet is when the true Christ returns. At the seventh trumpet, which is after the sixth trumpet, and he's not going to come rapture anybody away beforehand, that's Satan's deception. We will not gather back to Christ at all until after Satan appears in Jerusalem as the false Christ. It's right there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was and her two daughters-in-law with her, and they went on the way to return into the land of Judah. And you may have thought I was getting off topic there, but the land of Judah, what did Christ say? And this is one of Christ's ancestors. Christ said, When you see Satan appear in Jerusalem, let them which be in Judea, the land of Judah, flee to the mountains. The abomination of desolation being Satan is Antichrist. So that's what Christ said, not me. Verse 8, And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go return each to her mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you as Ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. 
And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters, why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say I have hope, if I should have a husband also tonight, and should also bear sons. Would ye tarry for them till they were grown? In other words, if she had children right then, what are you going to do? Wait until they're grown men? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And she's taking this kind of hard. This is all meant to be. And it's for the salvation of mankind that this is transpiring. And she'll understand that before it's all over with. And they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, and Ruth clave unto her. Ruth meaning female friend or beauty, depending on how you want to translate it. I prefer beauty. And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods, lowercase g. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest I will go, and where thou lodgest I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, uppercase G, my God, and her God being, of course, our Father. So at this point she's accepted Yahweh, our Father, as her God, and began to worship him. Where thou diest will I die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but death part thee and me. And so there you have it, a sevenfold oath by Ruth. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she left speaking unto her. She quit trying to talk her out of it at that point, and began to see the destiny within this perhaps, started to a little bit, because she's still a little bit bitter over losing her husband and her two sons, as you'll see. So they too went until they came to Bethlehem, which means house of bread, birthplace of Benjamin, one of the twelve sons of Israel, and it will of course be the birthplace of the Lord Jesus Christ as well, as I'm sure you already know. So see the destiny within that as well. House of bread. And who was that bread of God that came down from heaven? Christ Jesus, the living word. And it came to pass when they were come to Bethlehem and all the city was moved about them. And they said, is this Naomi? They still remembered Naomi. Really excited to see her. Wonderful person. The type that would brighten up a room when she walked into it, no doubt, for them to react this way, you know, and remember her and be happy that she'd returned after all that time. And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, which means bitter or sad, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. And again, he hadn't. This is all destiny and purposeful to bring about the salvation of the world. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabitess, again, there's nothing wrong with her being from Moab, because she's a female. Again, in your companion Bible, you can see so-called five times a Moabitess. In Deuteronomy 23, verse 3, it is masculine, and does not affect Ruth. It doesn't matter. And the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, with Naomi, when she returned, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem, and Moab being Adamic, one of Lot's children, the other being Ammon. And in the futurist prophetic sense, they symbolize the communistic systems, but that doesn't have anything to do with them historically or this, other than the fact that they were Moloch worshipers. But as you can see, Ruth had converted over to the 
worship of our father. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. And Bullinger says, therefore, at the Passover. And Christ will come from this and become our Passover, which means he will be sacrificed so that whosoever will should not perish in that lake of fire, but have everlasting life. But you have to adhere to his words in order to not be deceived, especially here in this end generation, if you want to make it into the eternity, because that's when you're actually saved anyway. So there you have it, the book of Ruth, chapter 1.